Guys, we recently did a video on the top prepper mistakes, uh, but today we're going to take a look at 13 things you do not want to do during an SHTF situation. Uh, it's a different kind of scenario. It's one of those things where it's initial and it could apply not only to seasoned preppers, but just to everyday individuals uh, who find themselves in trouble. With the worldwide situation that we've been in lately, it has brought a lot of people to an awareness that they need to be prepared. But one of the big things is, is there are certain things you just do not need to do. Now, first on the list is don't panic. Uh, that's one thing that a lot of people do. They see what's going on. They kind of go crazy. They run around. And here's the thing about panic is that it keeps you from making rational decisions, makes good, solid choices. And you'll end up doing things that you haven't thought out well, and you just act. One of the biggest things to combat that is to have some preps already ready. I mean, guys, your pantry should be full, whether you're a prepper or not. And you need to have good, solid items in your pantry, many that will last a long time. Uh, canned food is one of the big ones. I mean, guys, the way the processes they're using now, it will last indefinitely if kept in controlled conditions of 75 degrees or less. And so that is one of the number one things is your food, your water, just your basic survival needs. Guys, you need to have those things set aside. Same thing you would have in a hurricane or any kind of natural disaster, those kind of items ready to go. Number two, don't be obsessed with the news, with TV, with the talking heads. If you're not careful, you become confused because a lot of times there's conflicting information. It leads you to inaction. Now, you should monitor what's going on, there's no doubt. Know the things that are happening, look for the more credible sources that you have, and make sure that you do watch those things that are credible in the first place. And so, not getting completely obsessed with just watching the news 24-7 on the cusp of every little new detail. Guys, it is usually an unfolding uh, situation in the first place, and so it's important to make sure that you don't let that take away the action that you need to take. One of the things about this recent pandemic is that I was already watching what was going on in China. I already had a lot of friends in China. I was seeing what was happening, and I knew that there were going to be a lot of Chinese that were coming this way. And so looking ahead and kind of planning uh, based on what I was seeing and not necessarily waiting for the news to start breaking this breaking news and oh my gosh we gotta because once that stuff starts happening you're gonna be in with the crowd and you need to be ahead of the crowd <laughs> that is one of the biggest mistakes is having yourself just ahead of the crowd a couple of steps ahead and that way you'll be in a much better situation and not be completely immobilized by just hearing conflicting reports now, being a rugged individualist and being self-reliant, a lot of times we will refuse any kind of aid, especially government aid. You need to be able to access all assets. And there are times where you may be able to capitalize on certain things the government is doing for relief. Now, one of the big things and the caveat here is if there are strings attached, it's best to avoid it. You don't want to give them a lot of information. If they're giving out water and food, take it but when they start asking you to fill out forms just walk away and that's one of the things about being prepared is that you are more free to make decisions based on your abilities and not dependent on others and that's really the big thing being self-reliant is not depending heavily on others now as a community you know we're going to have to depend no one is completely an island on their own but it's definitely good to be able to choose the neighboring islands that you want to depend on now, number four is just planning all your preps on a bug out. You're ready to go. You've got your backpack. You've got all your essentials in there. You have your shelter. You know, even your vehicle is ready to roll. Here's the problem with bugging out. You are a glorified refugee. And number two, you've got to have a destination to bug out. And sometimes the grass is always greener is a perfect example of man you need to stay at home if at all possible all your supplies are there you're at home your neighbors that you know and love even those you don't at least you know them and your family is around and it's just the best place to lock down uh, you know sometimes that's not an option and you definitely need to have a backup contingency plan 
You need to have a bug out bag. You need to have things if you have to escape, if your house catches on fire, if you're attacked. There are definitely circumstances where a bug out is important, but 95 to 99% of your preparations should be around bunkering in. That is a very important place to stay and hold your ground. And if you haven't seen the Warrior Poet Society video recently of the three reasons he ditched his bug out bag, I highly recommend it and I'll have it annotated right above. But it's something that I've been saying for a long time, guys. You'll just be a glorified refugee. Now, one thing that's a very controversial subject in the survival prepping community is gray man. Uh, should you be a gray man? Should you stay under the radar? Get rid of all your tactical looking gear. You don't want to bring attention to yourself. Uh, there are others that feel that it's good to have that strong presence. Uh, one of the things that criminals fear the most is an armed citizen, even more than they fear the police, because they know the police have so many rules and policies they have to follow. But when it comes to self-defense, guys, you are your first responder. You are the one and you have the responsibility to defend yourself. And so one of the things about the gray man to me is I kind of balance it. Yes, you want to stay under the radar. Yeah, you want to kind of keep a low profile. You want to get to where you're going. You don't want to bring a lot of attention to yourself. But on the other hand, being strong, being solid, being resolved, and not looking like a victim. Because here's the thing, guys. Criminals, gangs, people that are, they're looking for easy prey. They want to find somebody that they can take out pretty easily. But if you have a strong presence, keeping a low profile, but yet, you know, people know that this guy means business, they'll leave you alone, typically. Number six on the list of things not to do is don't blame yourself and don't blame others. Uh, when it comes to survival, it's time to make a plan. And the blame game will just immobilize you. One of the things about this recent pandemic is there was a lot of blame, a blame that, you know, the wet markets, the Wuhan lab, Bill Gates, you know, the U.S. government. I mean, there's a, there were a lot of things that were uh, being passed around for blame. Guys, it doesn't matter how it started. All that matters is that you survive and get through it as an individual. And so stop doing the blame game, get your stuff together and survive. Just think about the things that you need to do and don't waste your time on other things. Number seven, lawlessness. Now, listen, in an early part of an SHTF situation or some kind of problem, you know, you're gonna have some desperate people out there and they may go and try to take some of your stuff. They may try to break into your house even, but typically these are people that are just panicking, they're desperate and they're just looking for something uh, to fill their belly. Uh, as time passes on, you're going to have groups that are going to be more organized. Uh, leaders are going to rise up and you're going to have gangs and warlords and whatever. So, you know, as things progress, you need to watch out for lawlessness. So make sure that you stay indoors as much as possible. When you do go out, make sure that you have some means of self-defense. Make sure you have people watching over you. Uh, make sure that you do have people that are there and around you that can help to have security. Uh, security is going to be one of the biggest things in an SHTF situation and being able to know what's going on around you and being able to meet that problem if you need to. Which leads to number eight, uh, you being lawless, you doing things that go against your own personal moral compass. Guys, if you're already somewhat prepared, it's going to keep you from the temptation of taking from others. And guys, that is one of the most important things is to continue to be who you are. Don't take from others. Uh, don't steal, you know, don't look to take someone's life, but to be, do the right thing, to be a good neighbor, to cooperate with others, and really that's where it's going to come together to where you're going to make it through this thing. Number nine, lone wolf mentality. Uh, one of the things that's very prevalent in the survival world is that lone wolf is you're the man, you've done all this work, you're not about to share it with those who have been slack and have procrastinated and have not prepared. And while there is some logic to that, uh, one of the problems is, is you're gonna need people. Now there's a book that I highly recommend you read and it's about the economic collapse that happened in Argentina. It's called The Modern Manual for the Upcoming Economic Collapse by Ferfal. I'll have it linked down below in the description. 
Uh, it's a great book. It'll really help change your mind about the way things are going. One of the things that he really stressed upon is that you need a community. You need people together. You can't watch your property 24-7, and you're really going to need to if things go south in a bad way. Uh, when people get desperate, they do desperate things. And so having people is an asset. Yes, it's going to be somewhat of a drain on your supplies, but you know that is one thing that we're going to need is to have those people there to get us through those times. And a lot of times people that may come to join you, they should bring their own stuff to a point. But in the end, the big thing is, is we need people to survive. We need people to make it through. One thing that we decided a long time ago was to have 10% of our prep set aside for people that are in need. And that may be people that are coming to our house that we know, friends and family, but having some extra supplies ready for whatever their needs are. Because again, they are going to be a huge asset. Now next is ignoring your basic everyday health needs. Uh, whether it's sanitation, you need to keep your place clean, you need to keep your body clean. If you're not staying clean, you risk getting sick, you risk infection, you risk things like that. Eating right, eating as, as well as you can during this time, you know, making sure that you have medication stocked up, first aid, uh, you know, trauma kits, different things, and learning how to use them. And so one of the big things a lot of people do is they have beans and rice stocked up, but they don't have balance with their menu. They don't have balance with their food. And so that's a really important element, if you can, is to stay healthy and to eat right, get exercise, and stay clean. Despair. Despair is one thing. If you're not careful, you just get into a state of despondency. You're not being active. You're not looking for solutions. You're just feeling down and depressed. And guys, you need to stay active mentally. You need to be finding solutions. You need to be taking care of those that are depending on you. And so if you're not careful, you get into that state of despair and you just don't do anything. Guys, we've got to stay active. You've got to stay mentally challenged and make sure that you're taking care of things. And when you come out on the other side, you'll be stronger. And so facing the challenge, moving ahead, even when the odds are against you, uh, that's when we make our greatest victories. One big thing to do is not to go into too much detail about your preps. You know, saying what you have, talking about things, bragging to others, even your neighbors, uh, that's going to cause a lot of attention that's going to come to you afterwards. People are going to be looking for things, looking for supplies. And so be careful to just keep a tight lip about what you have. As they said during World War II, loose lips sink ships. Same thing with your preps. And one big mistake that a lot of people make is just assuming they know what's going to happen. They have the scenario in their mind and they make their plans toward that scenario. Uh, the U.S. military makes plans, but they have a plan A, they have a plan B, they have a plan C. They have contingency plans and they don't always just look at things as happening the way they think they're going to happen because Murphy's Law always comes into play. Uh, you know, if it can go wrong, it will go wrong. And so having some ideas that may not suit what you think, just like the recent pandemic that we've had, uh, nobody knew what was going to happen. I mean, a lot of people, you're not going to bug out in this situation. I mean, everybody's staying at home. You know, the freeways are, are free. I mean, you know, there's not cars jammed up and keeping you from, you know, breaking down and people are dying in the streets. And so it's one of those things to have an open mind about different possibilities that can happen. Guys, it's not like we're going back to the Stone Age. You know, there's a lot of things that can happen. If we get to that situation, then, you know, you're going to be in a world of hurt anyway. But making sure that you have a well-rounded concept of what you're preparing for, but also realizing that you're not going to be prepared for everything that can possibly happen. And what's going on in your mind, your perception, is typically not going to be what happens. I mean, Mad Max and the Book of Eli are definitely things that could possibly happen, but that's going to be really extreme. Soldier of Fortune magazine did an article a few years ago, and they said that if you can live through the first 72 hours of any crisis situation, your chances of survival increase dramatically. Make some plans ahead of time and put yourself in a good position, and you're going to be in much better shape than most people. No one knows what can happen. It can be a, an environmental disaster. It could be a nuclear fallout. I mean, there are some different things that can happen. And you don't need to dwell on those things, but if you have a plan set aside, 
your chances of survival increase dramatically. And if you're serious about prepping and survival, check out Survival Dispatch Insider. It is the best resource on the web with credible information. Many of the world-leading survival and prepping experts are contributors there. We upload one video that's exclusive to the Insider every week. I'll have a link down below in the description. Check it out. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Grid down situation. Uh, one of the big things, though, is to have some stuff. One of the big, one of the things to kind of, it's called the modern economic, it's called the, it's called the modern, it's called the, what is it called? So make sure that you include your family in on your preps.